Hi folks, I'm Divok and welcome to the Artificers Guild, the home of all things Artifact. With two whole days of back-to-back -back open tournaments, I've been able to take note of every mistake the new players are making. So, here is my list of the most important mistakes you're making, and how to correct them. The first mistake that is commonly made is to give away initiative. I feel like this is probably the biggie. This will be the one that separates the newbies from those that are truly starting to become artifact players. If you aren't quite sure how initiative works, it basically decides who will go next. But importantly, it also keeps track of who gets to go first in the next lane. Because of this, you will always have to be thinking at least one lane ahead while playing artifact. As the first player to initiate a pass for the end of the current lane, we'll get to go first in the next one. Having initiative can allow you to land key control spells, or even counter control spells, and is often the deciding factor later in the game. If you're in the third lane on mana round 5 and you're playing against a blue deck, chances are they have an annihilation ready for mana 6. So make sure you go first in the important lane and kill or silence the enemy blue hero that's going to annihilate. This is just one small example but honestly, this is the biggest factor in a lot of games. You can take this one step further still, and don't worry I'll get back to the beginner mistakes in a second, but I want to quickly mention initiative control cards. Blue has Arcane Assault, Black has Hipfire, Red has Fight Through the Pain, and most colours have even more options. These cards give you initiative, allowing you to play another card, or more commonly, allowing you to pass first and then play in the next lane. Playing these in your deck is important, and playing around them when you know your opponent has one is even more key. Never just assume that you have the initiative if the enemy has any mana left at all. Another relatively common mistake, that is somewhat similar to the last one, is to play a card when you really don't need to. If you somewhat know the enemy won't be able to make a huge play like wiping your board, and the current board state benefits you if combat would ensue right there, just pass. Force your enemy to use their mana first to bring the board state in their favour, and that is when you stop passing and start using your mana. They will have already spent most if not all of their mana, so you can start playing cards from your hand knowing there is absolutely nothing they can do about it. I've seen this win plenty of games. It is even more important in what is to be the final turn. If you have lethal, and you know your enemy can't play any huge cards, but might still be able to block you, then just pass. If they pass back, you win. If they play a card, you get another chance to react, knowing they have less mana to respond with this time. Making use of this, as well as our next mistake, is how you can really abuse your opponent's mana in a game. The next mistake I see all of the time, that can really help you capitalise on a strong lane, or even pull back in a losing lane, is to look at playing your cheap items before playing anything else. Again, this is another tip for those lanes where neither player has an awesome card to drop. So it happens a lot more regularly in draft than it does in constructed, but it's one worth mastering either way. In these scenarios where you're both scrapping for control of a lane, if you have some cheap items like Traveler's Cloaks, Short Swords, or even the Healing Potions, Salve and Flask, use those before spending any of your mana if you can. While items are good, Spells, Creeps, and Improvements are often a lot stronger in swinging a lane in your favour. If you're ahead, then you can use the previous tip and just pass. But if there is a card you want to use, but you kinda want them to play out their mana first, then use items. This will often send the turn to them, and unless they can call your bluff and with a very risky pass, they will have to spend their mana to stay in that lane, and you will then get the opportunity to respond to whatever they play with all of your mana left intact. Alright, let's move on from the order in which you pass and play cards. We're still in the action phase as that's where 90% of the game takes place, but this mistake is almost too proactive. Guys, stop saving your heroes. I see people time and time again spending all of their resources to keep a hero alive in a lane they just aren't winning, or even in hotly contested lanes spending that mana to keep a hero alive instead of to gain control in that lane as a whole. Sure, giving the enemy 5 gold isn't great, but that's just the offset the huge advantage you get from your heroes dying. Yes, you heard me right, you get an advantage from your heroes dying. The action phase might be where you spend 90% of the game, but only where 10% of games are won. The majority of games are won in the deployment phase, as having the option to place your heroes exactly where they need to be is incredibly strong. I'm not saying you need to suicide your heroes every round, far from it. Just don't be afraid to let your heroes die from time to time. In fact, if you know that that hero's colour has a really important spell coming up in just two more mana, then letting it die can be a great advantage, as it will spend one turn out in the fountain, ensuring it's on the board in that particular turn, and you even get to place it exactly where you need it to be. The next most common mistake I see is twofold. People abandoning lanes that they really shouldn't, and equally people staying in lanes or overcommitting heroes to a lane where they really don't need to be. This one isn't really an overnight fix, you won't suddenly just do this better from watching the video, but so long as you're aware of the problem and you can start thinking about it more, you'll certainly get better at it. Okay, first things first, 
When should you really not abandon a lane? The question you need to ask yourself is, if you completely abandon this lane and you never have a single creep spawn there, can the enemy push Ancient really fast? Or can they take that tower with very little resources and still beat you in another lane? If this is the case, then you need to stay and fight it. The most common mistake regarding this that I see people running from is lanes with Mist of Avernus in it. Mist of Avernus, if you're not sure, is a 3 mana green improvement that at the beginning of the action phase gives every unit in that lane plus one attack. So it can be quite scary to fight into it, but the enemy will scale out of control if you aren't in there killing those units. So stay in that lane and fight that Mist of Avernus with everything you have. The second version, over committing to a lane, is a lot harder to fix though. The problem usually comes from expecting to need an extra hero in a lane you're already winning, and I think the best way to get around this issue is again to ask yourself a question, and you should be doing this in every game regardless anyway. During the deployment phase, put yourself in the opponent's shoes. Where would you put their heroes? The answer most of the time is in the most contested lane, and not in the lane you're winning outright. But depending on the deck, it could well be the opposite. Practice really does make perfect on this one guys, but just being aware is a good start. The final one is more of a little tip than a common mistake, as I can't really read the minds of the people I watch, so I've little idea as, as to whether they're actually doing this or not. Regardless, I will tell you to do this in every game at the end of every round. Before you go into the shopping phase, take a look at your opponent's gold, then after you draw cards at the start of the next round, take a look at how much gold is left, or rather, how much is now missing, and how many items were added into their hand. With the base set of Artifact, it is typically very easy to predict what items they have. If they have 3 gold less now, it's probably a Traveler's Cloak or a Healing Salve, so make sure you don't overcommit to killing an enemy hero because they can probably save it with some sort of health item, unless you take that into account and you can still beat it. If it was 7 gold missing, it was probably a Blink Dagger, so don't expect their heroes to stay put. Make sure you're predicting that the enemy heroes might end up in other lanes, and saving resources accordingly. The important one, really though, is 19 gold. If they suddenly lost 19 gold, that's either a Vesture of the Tyrant or a Helm of the Dominator, and you need to start playing around both items as they are incredibly strong in the late game. Also, it's safe to assume that your opponent is doing the same to you, so I go into every game just believing they can see my items in hand. That way I don't become over-reliant on being able to save a hero with that last second salve, or fooling them into playing a big creep like an Ogre Conscript and then stealing it with my Helm of the Dominator because I just assume they know I've got those cards ready. That way I can't be taken aback by them suddenly being able to counter my new items. And that about wraps up the most common beginner mistakes I've seen in Artifact. I hope this helped you guys bring your game to the next level. As always, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the content, feel free to like and subscribe as it does really help the channel out. I have been Divok of the Artificers Guild and I will see you next time.